So brothers and sisters, as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass today, this month of October is Respect Life Month, and today is also the Feast of St. Therese of Lisieux. She has a lot to teach us about what it means to respect life, to respect the dignity of others. To the, this way of love is something that she modeled very well in her own life. So I'm just going to begin my homily with an excerpt from the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops website. They've got a little summary on this Respect Life Month from the scriptures that we heard proclaimed today. It says, quote, In the second reading, St. Paul beautifully calls followers of Christ to be united in mind, heart, and love. He encourages Jesus' disciples to reject selfishness and rather humbly regard others as more important than ourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. St. Paul presents Jesus as the perfect model for this, for us to imitate, for Christ emptied himself taking the form of a slave. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. As Christians, we are called to what Pope St. John Paul II called radical solidarity. And that's the theme for this month, this Respect Life Month. Radical solidarity with women who are pregnant or parenting in difficult circumstances, and with their children, born or pre-born. Solidarity is the way in which we put our love for others into action. Pope Francis reminds us that solidarity refers to something more than a few sporadic acts of generosity. It presumes the creation of a new mindset a transformation within our own hearts. As disciples of Christ, we are called to make a sacrificial gift of ourselves for the sake of our neighbor. Radical solidarity compels us to be at the side of vulnerable mothers in profound friendship, compassion, and support for both them and their pre-born children. It requires us to address the fundamental challenges that lead an expectant mother to believe she is unable to welcome the child God has entrusted to her. So this requires a conversion of heart. This requires us to have an experience of Christ that allows us to imitate his love that he demonstrated throughout the Gospels for the people most vulnerable and most alienated and most isolated from the people of God. Jesus modeled for us this way of solidarity. So then it continues by saying radical solidarity can be lived out in countless ways, including volunteering at your local pregnancy help center, helping an expectant mother find stable housing, babysitting so a mom can work or take classes, providing encouragement and a listening ear to a mom without a support system, or maybe even talking to Tessie Jenkins about joining Walking with Moms in Need right here in the parish. It's our job, each one of us, brothers and sisters, to accompany these pregnant mothers and these fathers as well. It's our job to encourage them and support them and show them that we really do value life and that we really do want to see every single conceived child come into this world as a gift from God to us. So it continues by saying, in reaction to the overturning of Roe v. Wade, some areas of the country now protect the child in the womb, while others are doing all they can to increase access to abortion. At this critical moment, we have been entrusted with new opportunities and new responsibilities to build a civilization of authentic love. We must do all we can to help mothers and their children flourish. 
This cannot be accomplished by laws or policy alone, but requires the continual transformation of our own hearts so that we may recognize in every person the face of Christ and place their needs before our own. We pray that we may be of one mind and heart as we respond to the needs of mothers and their children. So I'm just going to share two testimonies from women that were written in this um, release from the United States Council of Catholic Bishops, and they're quite inspiring. It's not super difficult for us to embrace this respect for the life of the mother and the child in the womb. And we're going to see. This first one was Melissa. She's from North Carolina. She has a young children and a busy job, attending a parish informational session for walking with moms in need, thinking she might help out there. But she felt the Lord's call. And by the end of the session, she had volunteered to be the ministry's coordinator. Her parish now holds hand up days once a month during which families can shop free of charge for baby and toddler items they need that have been donated by parishioners. Melissa shared some powerful words of encouragement. Quote, I think for too long we have been comfortable leaving the work of accompanying women in crisis situations, pregnant or parenting, to others in the nonprofit and government sectors. It is very clear in the gospel that this is our job, all of us. A woman in a pregnancy center once told me that most women considering abortion are wrestling with a financial matter less than $250, and that has already stuck with me. If we can lighten the burden just a little, what a difference we can make. It is literally life or death. So this is one example. It's a simple thing, having some items available for a mom or a dad in need, sacrificing something that we might want to buy so that we can have money available for somebody in need at this very important time in their lives. Here's another one about a woman named Jessica. Her name has been changed for the sake of privacy, so this is a pseudo name, Jessica. She made a last ditch call for help from a bus in Washington, DC. She was pregnant and homeless, and she was using the bus for a place to keep warm. Jessica had just scheduled an abortion because she didn't want to have her child on the streets in winter. Jessica, homeless and pregnant, called from a bus and reached a church-based ministry that provided free housing, case management, and the support of caring volunteers. With this help, Jessica's natural drive could shine through. She found a job with benefits near her new home and was promoted three times before, before her son was born. She established new, healthy life habits and was blessed with her very own car from the generosity of a local Catholic parishioner. Jessica and her son are now thriving in their own apartment and are confidently building a new life together. Friends, this is church. This is the body of Christ. This is who we're called to be as Catholic Christians. When we see someone in need who comes to us, we have to not, as the parish, be ready and willing to respond to their needs, but as the people of God, organizing yourselves together with Tessie and walking with moms in need, coming up with ways in which you all can respond to the needs of the people. Because as you know, St. Scholastica is not a very wealthy parish, but when we get the resources of all the people here together in a creative way, we can provide for the needs of anyone who comes. I remember listening to Catholic radio a little while ago and Father John Ricardo was on the radio and I remember him saying something that really pierced my heart. He said, there should never be anyone who walks into a Catholic church anywhere in the world that asks for help and that help should not be able to be provided, period. I thought about that and I was like, well, what about little parishes like St. Scholastica in Detroit? We don't have a lot of money. 
well, you don't need a lot of money, brothers and sisters. You just need creativity. You need a plan. You need to be proactive. You need to know how to respond to each and every person who comes ahead of time. And sometimes you have to be creative in the moment, as you have done at times heroically here. I affirm you for that. So this is a challenge during this Respect Life Month to really put our actions where our words are. I've heard many on the, on the um, pro-abortion uh, side of the argument say, well, what are people doing to help mothers in need? What are people doing to help those who come that have legitimate needs? And unfortunately, the answer at times is not enough. And that's a good point. And we need to respond to that criticism and really be ready to respond in love and charity to each and every person who comes to us. So I'm just really encouraging you today. Don't be afraid to talk to Tessie after Mass. She already has a committee put together. They've already had a few meetings and they're already planning on doing some wonderful things here in the parish, but they need your help. It's the whole parish that needs to come together and do this. It can't just be a few small people coming together and doing it. So please, brothers and sisters, uh, as I continue on with these last points from this homily, I encourage you to take the call to action seriously. So it finishes by saying, God has given each of us particular gifts, and with those gifts, he entrusts us with a role and a duty within the body of Christ. Embracing an attitude of radical solidarity calls us to honestly reflect on some challenging questions and to consider specific actions we can take to foster an authentic culture of life. So I want you to consider these questions. Do I know what efforts are happening in our area to help women who are pregnant or parenting in difficult circumstances? Well, now you know that we have walking with moms in need. That's one way in which you can answer that. Second question, what are the needs? What are the needs? Third question, what are my gifts and talents? How can I provide for these needs? Fourth question, how can I adjust my schedule or budget to assist efforts to help moms in need and their children? I really encourage you to take these to prayer. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of ways in which I can personally sacrifice for the good of the other. I know that for sure. A cup of coffee costs $5. Brew it at home, it's free. <laughs> well, not free, but a lot less than $5. Set aside some time today or tomorrow to read back through today's second reading and ask yourself the question, how is the Lord asking you to put others first? How is Jesus asking you, brothers and sisters, to put others first before your own needs, placing others who are in need at the forefront of your mind? And consider praying the Respect Life Month Novena, which can be found on the website respectlife.org, nine days in a row of prayer. And finally, Consider supporting Tessie and the Walking with Moms in Need ministry here at St. Scholastica. So important. They need your help. They can't do it alone. Come talk to her after Mass. Go over to Coffee and Donuts and speak with her. She's ready and willing to launch this ministry, but uh, we need you all to be part of this. So let's pray together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you for the gift of life, the gift of our lives. And we, actually, we ask you to please help us to see how we can individually and collectively as a body meet the needs of these men and women in need, particularly these pregnant mothers, and how we can respond in charity and love to them whenever they come to us and provide whatever they need at that moment in time so they can feel supported and loved by our community of faith, by Christ himself working in and through each one of us, that they can experience the love and mercy of God.
to each one of us who are an extension of this great gift that he's given to us, this gift of love, this gift of mercy. And we ask this with confidence and trust in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.